I don't love you as if you were rare earth metals. Conflict diamonds are reserves of crude oil that cause war. I love you as one loves the most vulnerable species, urgently between the habitat and its loss. I love you as one loves the last saved the last seed saved within a vault, gestating the heritage of our roots. And thanks to your body, the taste that ripens from its fruit still li lives sweetly on my tongue. I love you without knowing how or when this world will end. I love you organically without pesticides. I love you because we'll only survive in the nitrogen-rich compost of our embrace. So close that your emissions of carbon are mine. So close that your sea rises with my heat. Can I ask us all to put our hands together? Thank you, Jenny, for manifesting the power of the climate arts. Everyone, this is Jenny Gomez. You'll be hearing more from her later about her experiences as a youth climate poet and activist. Um, thank you so much. This poem, this beautiful poem, is by the remarkable Craig Santos Perez, who's a native Chamorro poet from Guam. He sends his aloha to everyone here, and particularly to you, Jenny. He was overjoyed to hear that Jenny would be reciting his beautiful poem. So climate arts has exploded onto the scene these last few years. You've just heard some climate poetry. There's also climate opera. This show, Sun and Sea, sold out almost immediately at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, where it's playing now. There's climate fiction for all who haven't yet read this fantastically interesting fable um, a Children's Bible, a very decorated book from last year. I can personally recommend it. Um, and of course, there are the visual arts, where the movement for climate arts really began some years ago. And as just an example of how explosive the development of that aspect of the field has been, we're going to share three artists, very, very different approaches to a recurrent theme in the visual arts touched by climate which is the loss of polar sea ice. Hugely scientifically important and a global tragedy as well. Here we have a spectacular pastel drawing by the artist Zaria Foreman. Behind Zaria, lest you think this is a very high resolution photograph, you can see a little patch of white on the canvas where she hasn't filled in the space with touches of blue and gray. Another approach, here exemplified by the Danish-Icelandic artist Olafur Eliasson, is to simply bring the polar ice that's fallen into the sea to the people, in this case, London. This piece, Ice Watch, has been iterated in several different locations around the world. And finally, we have light projection onto polar ice. This is a piece by David Buckland, and it powerfully articulates the message and the goal and the work that brings us all here together today. Another world is possible. We all came through the photography that's blossomed around the climate crisis in entering this room to be together. The Decade of Change exhibition is co-presented by our friends at the Nest Summit, our hosts here today, by the Climate Group, which produces all of Climate Week by the British Journal of Photography, the oldest venue in the world for photography, and I'm proud to say by the Climate Museum. And now that we've reviewed the extent to which the arts have been permeated by a focus on climate, I'll turn to our second subject, which is why this is so transformational and so important. 
The arts are fundamentally built into how we as a species experience our own communal and social nature. It's no accident that in some of our first homes we find paintings on the walls. And it's not an accident that scholars debate whether speech came first or song, but they don't debate that the evolution of those two forms of expression is intimately tied together. The arts build community and they express our connection to each other and our capacity for creativity in a way that nothing else does. And for that reason, the arts are essential to the fight to save our world, to save our world from climate devastation. The arts build community and community is what we most need to move forward together. And I'll say that again. Community is what we most need to make progress on climate. Why? We need to think big and we need to think about each other. That ambition and that compassion are essential for progress and the arts helps us build them. As in this example, where the arts create a sense of shared awe. Or this next one, where the arts create a sense of shared place. This is Anish Kapoor's cloud, excuse me, cloud gate in Chicago. I think of it, I had to look at the prompter because I think of it as being the bean, which many of you probably do too. Imagine that plaza without that piece, it would be empty. The arts create a shared sense of political priority and purpose. Here, Kara Walker's spectacular, striking piece, A Subtlety, critiques American white supremacy and misogyny in a way that no words ever could and brings people together to think about that critique and to think about what we all want to do about it together. Another mobilization of the arts for political ends. Here's Thomas Saraceno's piece Erosine, mobilized by an indigenous community protesting against a mining development in Argentina. The presence of that piece gives meaning to the protest and creates a sense of place for it. And here's a final example, Yayoi Kusama's spectacular pumpkin series here in gigantic bronze creating a sense of shared community and belonging in Naoshima, Japan. Very pertinently for our purposes here today, this piece was washed into the sea by a climate-fueled typhoon and its neighbors, the community of Naoshima, rescued it. So that's a story about climate disruption and loss and resilience through community. And that's really what we're here to talk about today how the arts create that sense of interconnectedness and community that we need to move forward. The Climate Museum has mobilized this set of superpowers that the arts holds in a couple of different ways. And I'm gonna talk about three instances of that. First is an ongoing participatory arts campaign with the spectacularly talented data journalist and illustrated Mona Chalabi called Beyond Lies. And here's an image of our launch pad at Governor's Island where we also have a seasonal exhibition hub. And this is, this is a, a, an initiative that seeks to integrate a number of different community engagement strategies around the issue of fossil fuel disinformation and the fossil fuel industry's decades-long crusade to cause us to think that we're the problem rather than its business model. We have, as you see here, teenagers learning fossil fuel media, fossil fuel media literacy skills and sharing them with the public. Um, we also have participants and teams of friends distributing free posters on every inhabited continent, um, in Kenya, um, in Austria, in places all around the world. We're very, very happy to say that in the United States, there's been a super robust response from teens in Texas to tech workers in the Bay Area, 
um, to outdoor education experts in the Bronx. This is a piece that we need for this moment. We've all seen what's happening in the headlines about Washington, D.C. The fossil fuel industry's influence is threatening to derail the climate agenda that we need. And I invite everyone here on behalf of the Climate Museum team to join in the campaign and to get involved with the work of Beyond Lies, beyondlies.org, easy, easy to remember. Please do join us. Coming up in October on the 10th in Washington Square Park, we have another participatory arts campaign, which is a very different way of using the arts as a springboard to build community, but one that has that same fundamental impulse despite the differences in tone and voice. This is a piece by Gabriela Salazar, who you see here casting molds of the window casements in her childhood home. Those molds then become the sculptural backbone of the piece and performance that will take place October 10th. The piece was originally commissioned for Earth Day 2020, and while it's been difficult to adjust to that for certain, it's also deepened the work's themes around community resilience and risk and loss in a way that's very, very profound. And on the 10th, you'll be able to meet the artist, take away pieces of the work. She's going to distribute them to the public, and you'll be invited to actively reflect on what they mean for you and engage in adjacent civic activation activities that we'll be presenting across a little plaza in the park. For those who are watching this live cast later, or who won't be in New York on October 10th, an award-winning team is making a film. Um, and if you sign up for our newsletter on our website, which is climatemuseum.org, you can um, get news of when that film will become available. So we welcome everyone to take part in both Beyond Lies and Low Relief for High Water, um, which I should have mentioned earlier is the name of Gabriella's piece. Um, and Get a sense of the range of different ways, different approaches that we can bring to using the arts to mobilize climate action and climate awareness. We also have a practice of engaging in community arts projects. Here you see a beautiful climate justice mural that was painted in the South Bronx at the International Community School. Here's a young man who participated in a citywide tile painting project that we did in association with an art installation that appeared in public parks across the five boroughs of New York City. And this beautiful snippet is from a crowdsourced poem um, from NYC Poetry Fest, where people wrote a single line and then only then got to look back at what had come before. It was kind of an exquisite corpse, but in poem form for people who know that party game. I want to ask Jenny to join me again. Jenny read that poem beautifully for us. She's also a climate poet in her own right. And in 2019, joined our very first youth climate arts program, Climate Speaks 2019. She wrote her own original piece of spoken word on the climate crisis. She rehearsed it, which you see here. Ultimately, she performed at the Apollo, and we'll have an image of that for you in just a moment. Um, but she also, and I want to give a huge shout out to the Climate Group and NYC and Company for this, um, was on view in bus stops and bus shelters around the city, um, thanks to the efforts of those two partner organizations, calling for climate action urgently in the, in the face of what we confront. Here's Jenny on the stage of the Apollo Theater, which is quite a place to make a debut. <laughs> um, and here she is now to tell you about her experience of being in that program and of performing that poem. And I would just ask that you reflect on what her experience as a performing artist tells us about the power of the arts for all who come into contact with it. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I just want to ask the audience and everyone else watching elsewhere, 
um, to you, what does it mean to be a climate activist? Well, for me, Climate Speaks uh, was a program that was an opportunity to take an artistic approach to reach out to a larger audience to spread awareness of the climate crisis. A lot of people in my group were not as informed about this issue, and not everyone takes in new information the same way. Poetry was a gentle way to break down the dangers that this crisis is bringing, and a softer way to introduce the facts. I wanted people to understand that certain communities and groups are affected more than others. Uh, during our current crisis, that has become even more evident. You know what? I'm just one person. But I know that my small contribution matters. I can make changes. My actions can have an impact on people of all ages. As a teenager, that's important because you go through years of people telling you what to do and how to do things. When I was able to share my poem and to share my emotions about climate change with a huge audience, I felt empowered. I felt heard. I wanted to also serve as a mirror for people my age to see themselves in me and to see what that they too could make a change. Not everyone has to perform on a stage, uh, but definitely anyone can define climate activism in a way that feels right to them. I want to leave you with this. We are all living in the effects of climate change right now. We are melting and polluting our future generation's futures away. And it's for this reason that I continue to ask people to take steps toward climate activism and protect what is theirs. To protect what is ours. Thank you. makes you know that we can win, right? It's now my huge pleasure to introduce another very, very special guest, the Broadway performer Mara Davi, whom you may have seen in the original, uh, original revival of A Chorus Line or a number of other productions. She's also a very, very serious climate and environmental activist and educator. Mara, take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Miranda. Jenny, thank you. Oh, that's my mic. Thank you so much for that beautiful poem. I really hope that my son and daughter can see themselves in you and be empowered to be a climate activist as well. And Miranda, what you said really resonated with me, that creativity is fundamental to our human nature and that community is truly the key to the change that we need. And that's why I'm really happy to be here today, partnering with the Climate Museum on behalf of the Broadway Green Alliance to join in this conversation about the role that the arts can play in climate action and climate solutions. Yeah! The Broadway Green Alliance is a community of theater professionals and enthusiasts that educates, motivates, and inspires the entire theater community and its patrons to implement environmentally friendlier practices. The very first core principle of the BGA is that it's impossible for us to be 100% green, but we can be greener every day. And what matters is that we take action every day, no matter the size. And following this principle, since its launch in 2008, the BGA has successfully catalyzed significant sustainability action. These changes have been possible through the BGA's volunteers, 
members and our green captains. And this is how I joined the Broadway Green Alliance in 2015 as a green captain for Dames at Sea on Broadway. I'm one of over 800 green captains and green captain alumni across the country from Broadway to off-Broadway, regional theaters, colleges, and universities. And what the green captains do is communicate and initiate sustainability practices at their theaters using the educational resources that the BGA and our advisor, the NRDC, provides for us, including our brand new Greener Reopening Toolkit, because Broadway is reopening! <laughs> yes! As everyone here knows, the climate crisis has never felt more urgent with increasingly extreme weather events, even just very recently around the world. It demands action from all of us, and the time is now to begin to do something to benefit our environment, because change will result from the cumulative effects of all of our actions. Artists have a very valuable skill set in this movement. Empathy, collaboration, and the ability to visualize and realize new worlds. As storytellers, we have a unique platform to amplify both individual and civic calls to action. So, today I have three calls to action for you. Number one, text CLIMATE NOW to 21333 to receive action tips from our sustainability advisor, the National Resources Defense Council, which also partners with the Climate Museum. Second, you don't have to be a theater professional to be a part of the BGA. So go to broadwaygreen.com and sign up to be a member and join us in our efforts. And finally, communication and collaboration, community, are pivotal to, the, to a sustainable and resilient planet Earth. So use your voice to talk to your friends, your family, your co-workers, and your legislators and tell your climate story asking them to create the change that we need. Together, we can all tell a new story and lessen the effects of climate change. Now, as you've heard from both Miranda and Jenny, effective collect collective action requires a range of voices. And in that spirit, I would like to share with you a video of the Broadway company of Jagged Little Pill when they joined the BGA last year to celebrate Earth Day's 50th anniversary. Written by Alanis Morissette and Glenn Ballard, Glenn Ballard, here is the Broadway company singing You Learn. Three, four. I recommend getting your heart trampled on to anyone. I recommend walking around naked in your living room. Yeah. Swallow it down. What a jagged little pill. It feels so good. Swimming in your stomach. Wait until the dust settles. You live.
to Broadway. Thank you to the arts. Thank you to Mara and Jenny and to the Broadway Green Alliance. Also, thanks to all of the climate artists and activists, the climate protagonists out there of every stripe. A very special thanks to the Nest Summit and the climate group for putting on this extraordinary series of events, Climate Week NYC. We are hugely indebted to you guys and appreciate the partnership enormously. The British Journal of Photography, the main mover and shaker behind the competition and exhibition that you walk through to get in here. I want to give a very particular shout out to the team at the Climate Museum without which, without whom none of what you've just seen would ever have occurred, and I'm sorry to hurt everybody else's feelings, but it is the best team around. <laughs> to everybody who gave permission for their work to be used in this presentation, we're very happy to share the deck with anybody. All you have to do is reach out to info at climatemuseum.org, and we will send it along. A, a huge thanks. And then, most importantly of all, in this moment, a huge thanks to everybody who's listening to this, either here today in person or later online, thinking about what your next move is going to be, how you're going to take the understanding and the traction that you have in this world to bring us toward that other possible world for the most impacted communities, first and foremost, but for everyone. That other world is possible, guys. It is, but only if we demand it. Let's join together in demanding it. Think big and act accordingly with ambition. Think of each other and act accordingly with compassion. We'll make that other world happen. Thank you.